here's the plan. Once you have the green light from a program officer, make sure you give yourself time to write. I've seen you know, I like throughout my career, I've seen people feel but partly because if you're in academic medicine, it's there's such a crunch to get yourself funded. Um, and sometimes you just don't give yourself enough time. There's this like, I've got to make it in by this deadline. What you actually have to do is make sure you get a proposal that's got a really good chance of getting a good score the first time in. Um, I've heard people say things like, well, I'll just wait to see what the reviewers say. And my stance on that is that if I can tell you what's wrong with your proposal, it's not ready for the reviewers. Because, you know, you should hear it from me first, <laughs> right, your mentor. And then once I'm like, oh, this looks good, it's ready to go, that's when you need to hear from the reviewers. You also want to build your team early. I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I throw together a team a little too quickly. And you just want to make sure that everybody on your team, you know, one, has bandwidth. And that's really hard around here because I don't think anybody has bandwidth, but you know, really is like, I love this study. I want to be, I want to contribute to it. And that you can plan around your team members, the people who are helping you write this proposal. You can plan around their, their schedules, like when they know that they're going to be busy, you know, so build your team early, use a schedule. So get a sense for like, you know, when do you think like, like for instance, I always do team science, right? I'm, and so I'll, you know, work with a biostatistician or an engineer and an engineer um, or somebody from a different school. And I'll say, you know, here's my timeline. This is when I'm going to get you these materials. This is when everything has to be done. Let me know when you're, when you think you would be able to work on your piece um, so that we can get that locked in place. By all means, use this boot camp um, while you're writing your proposal. We will absolutely give you lots of really great feedback. Just make sure your mentors and everybody have a chance to read it before you submit it. In the School of Medicine, or at least in our department, I think it works different in different schools and sometimes different departments, make sure you con contact your office for sponsored research right away. They will give you a deadline when they need all of their materials because they're going to help you submit your proposal to the system called ASSIST. When you're preparing, make sure you read the uh, funding announcement really carefully. Uh, at NIMH, I, I can't vouch for all the institutes, but at NIMH, the, the, the PAs are written and, and the RFAs are written by program officers and the, everything they put in there is really helpful. And so sometimes, and this again too, you should read the, the um, RFA or the FOA before you talk to your program officer because you unfortunately, if all the information is in the RFA that answers your questions, all they're gonna say to you is, again, read the RFA, everything's in there, go down this page, you know, so you want to be very prepared that you know um, that you're addressing all the issues. Sometimes the RFAs will also have instructions to the reviewers if there's special things that they're looking for, so they'll have outlined, um, you know, the, the types of things reviewers are instructed to look for in the application. And then again, do your budget. Uh, you don't want to, like, at the last minute, you know, weeks before it's due, find out you're like $2,000 over the, $200,000 over the cap, um, or even if there is no cap, it's a crazy amount um, and, you know, probably will get knocked down if you, if you propose too much. Just get all of that in, um, prepared.